Hey, what's happening, everyone? Sam Brief here with a fresh edition of the Mental Game Podcast. And I'm excited because today is the second edition of our new series called My Playbook, where I want to offer you short, bite-sized pieces of advice from some of the elite athletes, coaches, psychologists, and performers. I mean, the idea behind this is pretty simple. It's Hey, people's life stories are amazing and they have learned so much over the years and they've struggled and they've succeeded and everything in between. But I want this to help you the most. And sometimes what I hear from listeners like you is, hey, Sam, I think it's best when we cut straight to the point. So the idea behind my playbook is, hey, here's the recipe. This is what this person does to get right to get rid of their anxiety, to deal with performance issues, to deal with depression, whatever it is, that is my playbook. Reggie Hearn was amazing in the first episode. I've already heard some spectacular feedback. And if you haven't listened, rewind an episode and check out Reggie in the inaugural My Playbook. But now we turn the page to today's guest, and it's Tiffany Sardin, who I'm delighted to call a friend. She and I were in the trenches together at Chicago State University where she was the head women's basketball coach, and I was a broadcaster and a sports information director. I learned a lot from her. I watched her impart mental game wisdom on her young student athletes, and I watched her deal with personal trials and tribulations masterfully. She and I are still good friends. We keep in touch. I'm proud to still learn from her constantly and was even prouder to bring her on the podcast. A teacher, a lifelong learner, and just a wonderful human being. My friend Tiffany Sardin, welcome to my playbook on The Mental Game. Oh, Sam, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Just thank you. I'm really excited to have you here. I'm really glad that you already showed me your beautiful puppy-turned-older dog, Gabby, who I love so much. And now that we broke that ice, we can get rolling. Yes, let's go. <laughs> I appreciate you being willing to be open and honest and help some others with this conversation. So let's just start with the concept of adversity. You're someone who's dealt with adversity your entire life, whether it's on the court or off the court. So if you don't mind, I'd love to start with this. Take me to a moment in which you battled adversity. Something that that comes to mind for me and when when I'm thinking of adversity, like a real, you know, true life (laughs) adversity that I consider uh, is probably dealing with the passing of my brother. Uh, a few years back, um, I was literally in season or we were getting ready for season. Um, I was in the coaches meeting, you know, we having our meeting and things like that. And my phone just kept ringing and kept ringing. Um, and my, this was very unexpected. So um, the passing of my brother, but, you know, got the phone call and just kind of was just, you know, at a pause. Right. I think anybody would be shocked uh, when they get in that type of news and, you know, everything just happens so fast. Um, I had no time really. I, I, I couldn't even process it, Sam. It was so crazy to me because I'm just thinking like, wait, what? I have to go here. I have to go there. The coach side of me and the family side of me is just kind of like trying to work both, you know, work work both and just be like, all right, I got to go there, be be there for my brother, but still trying to process it. But also in the back of my head, it's like we getting ready for the season, <laughs> you know, like because, you know, that's what I love to do. Uh, but it, you know, like looking back on it and how I've handled it is way different than how I would handle it right now. Um, you know, I didn't give myself probably time, the the fair amount of time to really go through it and, and really process it, um, and really be there probably the way I really wanted to be because I was so, uh, one, still in disbelief, like, is this really happening? Am I really dealing with this right now? But also like, you know, I got to get back to the team too. Like, you know, I wasn't the head coach at the time. I was an associate head coach. I I couldn't wrap myself around it. So I was scrambling trying to figure out how do I deal with it? How do I deal with it? But I still felt an obligation, you know, a commitment to get back, to get back to work, get back to work. And, you know, it, it was just a really different way of dealing with it. Truthfully for myself, like, yeah, it did occupy and keep me busy Uh, But in those moments of, you know, kind of those quiet moments of being by myself and just looking back on it and thinking like, wow, like how, how did I get through that? And truthfully, it was basketball. It was basketball, which basketball has meant a great amount to me and, you know, have uh, 
uh, brought me a great amount of joy and, and love and all those things, empathy, everything basketball has given to me. Um, but it was just, you know, uh, that's how I dealt with that type of adversity at that time. And um, right now, you know, I'm dealing with it in a different way. So I'm giving myself much more time and, and grace to finally uh, kind of go through that process of, of grieving and healing and, you know, exploring some different things. Thank you for being so open about your process during that initial grieving time, and even now in the continual grieving process. I'm really curious, Coach, when you take me back to coming home, rejoining the team, you threw yourself into basketball. Did that feel like a short-term Band-Aid in a way? It, I was still in my head kind of like, is this really, like, you know, did I just lose my brother, you know, like unexpectedly? And I'm still so focused on trying to be present and be there for the team and, you know, support our women and support the coaching staff and just things like that. But it was just, it, it yes, looking at it, it was a short, short band-aid at that moment. It really was. And it's, you know, where it's like, you know, I can't bring my brother back, right? But it's also, I don't know, that's what really helped me. You know, it distracted me, right, from my feelings. And it really helped cover up how I was ultimately feeling, uh, probably deep down inside, right? I, I didn't seek the professional help probably that, you know, I should have. Um, but, uh, again, basketball and, and being around those young women and that group of people at the time was my therapy, right? That that was my way of coping and, you know, keeping me fit, like fulfilling me at the time, you know, and, and not – put me in a space where, you know, that's all I'm, I'm worried about is my brother, the passing of my brother and like what happened, what happened. But it was, uh, again, it was, it was, that was my therapy and my way of coping with it at that time. How were you able to be present with your young women and coach and teach and be there for them when you needed to be there for yourself? How did that work? Honestly, I don't even know how, right? Like I am, you know, Initially, I am like a, a very private person anyway. So, you know, they were well aware of my situation and they were super supportive of everything. Um, so it wasn't like, you know, it was like some secret, right? Like they, they all knew about it and they all were great, right? They were all great and, you know, supporting me like, you know, Coach Tiff, are you OK? Like, you know, just really, I think they were more so trying to make sure, you know, I'm having some joy or you know, I'm feeling okay versus, you know, me worried about them. But it, again, I, I was doing what I love to do, right? And that's, you know, helping teaching, helping developing, trying to game plan on how to win more games at Longwood at that time, just things like that. But uh, again, uh, I, through the grace of God, I guess I was able to, you know, stay focused and, you know, be present. You not only threw yourself into that season, but then threw yourself into a head coaching job at Chicago State when you and I were together, and then an associate head coach job at St. Louis. And only now you're taking a full basketball season to step back a little more and give yourself that time to breathe. How important is that to you? Oh, I think it's so important, right? Like, have an opportunity to step back right now. Um, at this time, like some people might see it as like, dang, you, you know, you're coming off this heck of a season and, you know, you were part of something special, uh, history at another school. But, you know, truthfully, I just I, I never took the break. Right. Because, Sam, if, if I can go back even before coming to Chicago State, you know, back to back, I had dealt with two passes, my brother one time for the first time and then my dad. Uh, was right after that. So it was literally back to back where I dealt with family losses that, you know, and then going into Chicago State and things like that. So it it is, it's so important. I think we underestimate, um, you know, stress, right? And, you know, our peace of mind and things like that. I think we really underestimate and undervalue because we are, we think, especially I think us as women, we're supposed to go, 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 like, right? Like, no. I got to go. I got things to do. I can't take a break. That break will be put off until, you know, sometimes things that just come across us that that we're forced to take the break without us being ready to take the break. So really be honest with myself and really take a second to think about my feelings, my mental health, my well-being and 
finally put that first. And it's okay, right? Like it, it is absolutely okay to sometimes take a step back and just pivot. Right. You know, if you have to, you have the space, you have the support and things like that. I, I think it, it it's it's important. I think that is so wise what you say about taking a step back and sometimes bucking society's expectations. You say, hey, as a basketball coach, I'm expected to do X, Y, Z. As a woman, I'm expected to do X, Y, Z. And it can be so difficult, whatever your line of work is, whatever your background is, to go against what you think society thinks you should do. So how did it feel for one of the first times in your life to say, no, screw that. I need to do what I need to do. You know, I feel great. I, I really do because it, it has. It's allowed me to really continue to grow. It really has. It's, it's given me the space and opportunity to, to be a better sister, uh, to, to be a better auntie, to be a better partner, uh, and just, you know, be a, a different type of service to my community, right? My neighborhood and, and things that I'm, also, I'm passionate about as well. Like just as much as I'm passionate about basketball, I'm passionate about serving the community, people around me, my family, my friends, and just finding ways to make make things just better, right? Like that, and that's what I'm. That's what this time is allowing me to do. If you don't mind me asking, while you're in this space where you're clearly going around and doing things in the community, you're being the sister, the auntie, the partner, the Tiffany Sardin that you want to be to the max. How much are you able to continually process the loss of your brother and the loss of your father? I'm able to do it often, honestly, uh, as much as I can, right? Like, I, I think about my brother and my dad daily, right? And, you know, now I'm able to go to the cemetery, right, to see my brother, see my dad, and able to go and, you know, change out the flowers and stuff like that. And be, I'm able to, like, I feel like able to fully you know, have conversation with them. They're not here, right? But I'm able to have conversation. But also my other siblings too. I'm able to like really feel like I'm being, I'm there for them in a way that, you know, I don't think ultimately I was able to be, you know, and again, I got a ton of nieces and nephews and it's so exciting and rewarding for me to be able to like, you know, they, they calling me like, cause they know I'm here now at first. I don't think they, you know, they were hesitant to probably call me cause I was away. Um, to just even talk like you, you see that game or, you know, what you think of this and every uh, stuff like that. And I'm like, this is cool. I guess I've been missing out on this. Right. And I'm able to be like, wow, like I see my nephew who's getting super tall, like by the day. And I'm like, I just saw you last week and now you like taller than me. Right. I'm always getting daily reminders when I'm seeing teachers or community leaders like you look just like your brother. And it's like their memory is continuing to live on, even though they're not here. And it makes me happy as a sister um, that people remember them. Right. And it's not just, you know, us as a family, but other people. Thank you for sharing, Coach. Absolutely. And I'm sure both your father and your brother would be proud to hear that. You know, you're honoring their memory, not just going to the cemetery, but honoring them in the community just by being who you are. And I'm also curious when you think about others and think about people listening to this podcast and trying to take something and learn from you. What's a piece of advice from what you've experienced that you might have for someone sitting and listening, driving in their car? and hearing your story. I know people probably have heard this saying before, but I, I do, I really do feel like it is okay to not be okay sometimes, right? Uh, but it is, you know, I do think you have to really be honest with yourself, right? And uh, talk with people, right? It's okay to talk about, you know, some things that you might feel like you just want to keep so private. <laughs> and look, trust me, I'm the ultimate private person. But you know, it's okay to share what you think and how you feel and and what you're going through with somebody that might be closest to you or listen, this a stranger, no joke, like a stranger, you know, you have some, of the, some conversation where just something might enlighten you or you just might be a beacon of hope um, or, or happiness for somebody else. So you, know, you don't have to feel like it's just you going through it because trust me, it's somebody else going through probably some, some feelings or have some of the same feelings that you, you have. So again, it is okay to be you and be your authentic self, and and nothing is wrong with just taking a pivot and, and resetting yourself. It's okay to not be okay. That is so 
important. And we can fill in those blanks with so much. It's okay to be you. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to take a break. It is almost always okay. Unless you're doing something illegal or crazy, it's almost always okay. Yes, it really is. It's, it's so okay. And you're going to be okay. If you've gotten through, you know, A, B, or C, A, D, E, F, G, like, you, you can keep it moving. Tiffany Sardin, you're a gem. I've learned so much from observing and watching you be a leader and be who you are. So it means so much to have a few minutes to pick your brain, hear your story, and your playbook. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Thank you for having me. It's always great catching up with you. And back here in the studio, big thank you to Tiffany Sardin for a wonderful edition of my playbook. If you want to give me any recommendations for the next guest, someone you want to hear from, a playbook you want to read or listen to, hit me up. My DMs are open on Twitter, at Sam Brief. You can send me an email, briefsam at gmail.com, and I would love to talk shop about what you want from the mental game. On that note, the mental game's on Patreon. If you want to get a little more out of your mental game experience and become a VIP member, head to Patreon. Just Google Patreon Mental Game. You'll see all the info right there. All righty. This has been episode two of my playbook. I'll talk to you again soon. And as always, from my home studio in Chicago, I'm Sam Brief, wishing you a wonderful day and a reminder to treat yourself and others very well. Adios from Chicago. <laughs>